for me how to combat fear in forex trading because fear is always omnipresent uh, be it in trading or our nature it's always it's always present and we need to combat it effectively in order to have a profitable result okay before i begin uh, i will be quick with the uh, risk disclaimers so risk disclosure statement stating all possible risks associated with forex market by accepting the risk you're also proceeding uh, further with me okay uh, the second part is explaining that online educational materials are developed by mirror markets estonia and uh, to get a corresponding information on all charting you should uh, Contact the appropriate entity on www.adramarketsglobal.com and select your country. Third part of this disclaimer stating that the analysis represents my personal opinion. It's not the suggestion for a trade. And these are not the weekend's opinions. It's .co.uk. It's not .co.uk website, but the global use.com website. And this webinar is for informational purposes only and educational. So, with having said that, I'm ready to begin. But today's agenda, types of fear in trading, symptoms, and how to overcome the fear, which is maybe the, the, the I can say, the hardest, the hardest battle is how to o overcome the fear, especially if you were losing a lot and you don't have any more money to invest in trading. So types of fear in trading, there are a lot of types of fear, but most common are fear of losing money, fear of missing out, and I think, and I specifically refer to on a move, then fear of letting a profit turn into a loss, and fear of being wrong or not being right. Now, fear of losing money, it's, I need to say that, Basically, it, it's called uh, a loss aversion, okay? It's called loss aversion. And as I said, it exists in all pores in, in our life, in all segments of our life. Basically, uh, various economists have identified loss aversion as a major factor in financial decision-making. Because most people would rather, would rather avoid losing money than acquire more. But the thing is that the psychological effect of losing is twice as powerful as the, basically the effect of gaining, okay? So that's, that's the study which was conducted back in years. I think the study was conducted some 30, 40 years ago. So definitely is it true that the psychological impact of losing is twice as powerful as the impact of gaining. So the thing is, if you lose, you will have uh, several consequences. First of all, fear of losing or loss will make you uh, he hesitant to execute your strategy. So, for example, you have, uh, you have spotted, for example, just uh, a cross of EMAs, and you know that your system is telling you that in this part, you should enter short of the market because uh, the timing was good and your system probably gave you a good signal because you already lost back in time. You are hesitant now to execute your entry. Now, the thing is, probably what would happen is that this entry would go on in a profit. Now, that is something which occasionally happens because you're afraid to pull the trigger, okay? So you basically suffer, you're suffering from inability to pull the trigger on new entries and very often on new exits, okay? You need to know that you need to be very decisive in taking action, okay? Very decisive. And when your strategy tells you that you should make new entry or exit, Okay, you should not be feared because fear of loss will hold you back from taking action and you will lose confidence in your ability to execute your strategy. Okay? That will cause a lack of trust in the strategy and then you will jump from one strategy to another strategy 
effectively searching for a holy grail, okay, which does not exist. Holy grail in trading does not exist. I have mentioned it very, very often, and I always mention it, you are the holy grail. Because trading is definitely a psychological game. You can have a good system, you can have a great, great strategy, but if you don't use proper money management, odds are that you will lose, okay? Now, fear of losing money definitely will, will carry over because it will carry over to your inability to execute future. Okay? Now, uh, we, we, also, we also suffer from so-called analysis paralysis because you are merely looking at new trades, but you don't have a proper reinforcement to pull the trigger, okay? And because you, you have been losing money, now you're very, very hard to pull the trigger on a new signal, okay? Now, no one like, likes to lose, okay? But the reality is even the best professionals will lose, okay? Now, the key is that you don't lose much, you should lose much less, which allow you to remain in the game, both financially and psychologically. The longer you can remain in the game, I, I, I call it trading game, okay, with a good strategy, the more likely you will start to experience a better run of your trades that will hold that fear back, okay? Now, guys, when you're having trouble pulling the trigger because of this fear, okay, because of fear of losing money, realize that you are worrying too much. Do not worry too much, okay? Do not worry too much about the results and do not worry about your execution process. Wealthy traders and profitable traders learn that unemotional timing, okay, strategies, okay, unemotional trading system will prevent losses during emotional times. You know, and they know, and we all know that these strategies work. But you just need to pull aside your fear, okay? And you need to be able to take a loss. Be able. Then I will give you remedies for being able to take a loss, but you should always be able to take a loss. Because losses are a part of trading, okay? If you cannot take a loss, okay, and you will surely not be here for the big gains because you will always be on the sidelines protecting your capital against a potential loss. Remember that good timing strategies are designed to guard against big losses. Every trade you take has always initially the potential to become a loss and get used to it, okay? Get used to it. Fear of missing out is basically uh, a fear that you will miss on a trend move. So imagine yourself that you are watching the charts and basically the entry was around this region and now you are watching it here. The thing is, every trend basically has an end. But every trend has also a retracement. As the trend goes on, okay, you will probably be thinking, okay, I missed the move and I will jump in. Usually that fear of missing out can be characterized, for example, as a part of a greed. Because you, a trader, do not act based on logic. You act based on your desire, on your psychology, right? Because you want to jump in on a fried train. Okay? What is going on here? The trend gets started, you missed out, and now you're jumping in on a fried train because the trend, you're afraid that the trend will continue without you on board. That fear is fueled, okay? That fear is fueled, especially if your account is not too big and you want to basically raise your account in express time, in express manner, in a fast time. That, that, that is very hard to achieve, okay? 
that is a very dangerous situation, okay? Because you will say, give me any price, I don't care, I will jump in, the trend is too strong. Usually what happens is you get into a retracement. So instead of going up, the price will go down effectively. Now you are here, you enter here, now you may suffer from a double loss. Your stop loss may be hit, but the trend will continue. Guys, what happens that usually happens after the strong news? After the strong news, okay? Uh, yesterday, uh, that was, uh, yeah, yesterday, I had a webinar with Admiral Markets, and probably some of you were in a uh, session recap webinar, and I gave the entry on, on GBP dollar, at 1.5460 with a stop loss at 54.23. And a lot of traders asked me, really, they asked me what would happen if GBP dollar goes down, it will surely not, it will surely not stop at 54.60, it might hit stop loss. I always say, guys, wait for retracement. I don't know how many of you have been visiting my webinars, especially session recaps. But the thing is, you need always to wait for a retracement. Because sometimes news, which are released through a day trading, during day trading, they will give you that proper retracement to enter at a better price. Remember, guys, you're buying low and you're selling high. That is always the case when you want to trade forex markets. Buy low, sell high, because big players have already determined a predominant trend. I will not be surprised to see, for example, dollar yen to jump off 123.30 to 124.30, even on bad news for dollar today. Okay, I'm talking about dollar yen pair, because we have uptrend on dollar yen, and those people those traders who have bought dollar yen an hour ago when it dropped because of the news, they are now 30 pips in a profit, guys. Okay? That is what you need to consider when trading. That is always what you need to consider when trading. Do not be fear. Do not be fear of missing out. Be feared if you jump in a fright train. Okay? Be fear of entering longs at this position here. Do not be feared to enter here. And do not be feared if the market does not give you a retracement. Because you are doing right. Even if your trade stops you out from some reason, you are doing right, believe me. You are always doing right when you are buying low and selling high. You just need a system to tell you to tell you which signal you should take. Because not all highs are for shorts and not all the lows are for buying. But the core principle of selling high and buying low is the thing which you should always stick to. Okay? I trade from five different accounts. And I have always, I have always been talking with you from my personal experience. Those trades which were basically giving me a good run are always the trades where I basically went for uh, potentially buying from the low. Excluding scalping. Now, I'm not talking about scalping. That's a different story. But I'm talking about the uh, intraday position. And those trades where, where, where basically I try to tra take breakouts without any proper, I don't know, logic behind it, those were losing trades. So waiting for retracement, okay? Do not be fear that you will miss out. You have 30 different pairs to trade. For example, Admiral Market TCN account has very low spreads. Even on, on, on miners, there are two pip spread, it, it, it's great. So there are 30 different pairs to trade. 
Why should you be? Why you, you should be fear of missing out when you have so many different instruments to trade? Okay, don't forget, trading is psychology game. Fear of letting the profit turn into a loss. Okay, that's also a fear, basically, that uh, you can experience while day trading. Because uh, sometimes it will happen that you are 20 or 30 pips in a profit, and suddenly the price inverses and hits your stop loss. It has happened very often on euro-dollar pair, because as you see, a situation is not so good. Situation is not so good on euro and Greece. So the thing is, guys, basically, if you're feared of being wrong, then uh, you, if you're if you're feared of being wrong, you're also feared that your profits might be turned into a losses. Uh, the only remedy which I can tell you about this is use trailing stop. If you see that the market is going sideways and you have taken a long position, and suddenly you have a spike in long direction but suddenly there is also retracement, but then again, what you can do is put your trailing stop. Place your stop on break even, okay? Or after 20 pips of profit, place your stop to break even plus, let's say, 15. So you will basically secure your profit. I presume that an um, average stop loss on day trades are, is 30 pips. So usually after 20 pips of profit, if you're not sure that the market is very eager to go in your direction, after 20, 25 pips, put your stop loss to break even plus 20. Effectively securing and doing a free ride, okay? So that fear is also omnipresent, but uh, as I say, when market is normally, when, when market is, in, is trending, you should not be feared, really, okay? Uh, usually, what will happen is you will you will be you will be securing your profits by trailing stop, and you will be taking at least 20 pips of profit. Now, fear of being wrong is maybe the biggest trading fear because no one likes to be wrong, whether in our life, whether in trading, because it pulls your uh, your ego, right? Your, it pulls your ego in. So if you if you if you are wrong, for example, from uh, day to day, uh, you will start to make excuses. What I can say is analyze first your psychology. Start from analyzing yourself, not your system, not the market, not the news, not your friends, yourself. Because you need to, to figure out what has been wrong, what has been brought wrong inside you, okay? So don't be fear of being wrong. From time to time, you will be wrong, okay? But don't get that fear as that, that others will judge you. No one will judge you if your trade does not go in the direction you would like to, okay? Okay? Many times, you, the trader, would admit that being wrong is one of the toughest fears for you to overcome. Okay, because your wives, your spouses, your trading friends, your other friends who watch you trade will think, okay, what would think, what would they think of you when you lose the money? Okay, you would have a hard time accepting mistakes and being wrong. Okay, but that's that's not the problem. The problem is how you take any potential and how you will take any potential remedy for this kind of fear, okay? Because the fear of being wrong will get you into revenge trading, okay? Because you want to, you want to prove to your friends, to your spouses, to your wives, that you are good. You want to prove that to yourself, okay? Because you will say, great, now I will be better, I will prove that I can trade, that I am good, and you take another trade, one after another, and usually one losing trade after another losing trade. That's not good, guys. That's not good. Because that kind of fear, that kind of fear will get you into revenge trading. And revenge trading is something you should stay from in a wide circle. Okay? 
self-justification and other psychological considerations okay, can affect those traits later. So be aware of that fear in now moment, because if you're not aware of the fear in now moment, that will become a future obstacle to you. Okay? Uh, that is one of the biggest problems. Now, various symptoms are for that. Cut leaders show in fear of giving profits back. So basically, you have 30 pips of profit, but you close the trade after five pips of profit. Guys, forget about it. Forget about it. If you have 30 pips of profit and your system is 70% successful, then placing a trading stop after 25 pips is great. But if you cons consistently trade the system with 30 pip stop loss with only 5 to 10 pips of profit, that's not good. You're giving profits back and you're cutting the winner short. Those are the symptoms of all fears we've been talking about today. Hesitate in pulling the trigger because you fear the prospects of a loss. I explained already. Forget about, forget about being wrong. Forget about fear of being wrong. Who cares what others would think? Think about yourself and yourself only. Because when you trade, no one should stick around. No one should watch you trade. It's your dimension. Okay? Close the door. Lock the door. And do not let anyone come in. Because the effect of trading in a team and the effect of trading when you are single is huge. I have been trading in a team and I know how it is. It's much better when you're a single trader, independent trader. You can listen to advice. You can watch analysis. It's great. And you should do it. But when you trade, don't let others stare into your screen because they will, they will get you into emotional, into that emotional spiral. I will show you the emotional spiral. And you, your emotions can get confused because you won't act uh, the same when the people are watching you trade and when you are doing it alone. I have some experience in that maybe it's easier for me, but the thing is, uh, no one lies to, to, to uh, when, when others contemplate about their trading entries and trading strategies. Okay? It's something which is reserved for you. Hang on, hanging on to losing trades because you fear taking the loss. Guys, every single trader who have removed stop loss from trading, okay, will suffer from a margin call. It's just a matter of time. Okay? That's big problem. Do not hang on losing trade. Accept your stop loss. Why are you fear to accept your stop loss? It's nothing wrong. Because if you're trading with a proper risk, you should not be afraid of taking a loss. It's great. You will lose. Okay. But how much you will lose, guys? It's great. Okay. I will lose 0.5% if I'm trading, if I'm trading properly, of course. If I don't gamble. If I want to gamble, then okay. 80% of the account has been lost. Great. I'm gambling, but I, I'm gambling, but I have the money. I will put in another 10,000 because I'm gambling. It's only about your approach. It's about your approach. If you have the money to invest, okay, it's better to gamble in forex market than going in casino because you have more chances to win in forex market. But if you want to trade professionally, you need, well, usually you will need bigger account. Because if you have a $1,000 account, it will take some time to get it to 10000 So you need to, you need to think about it. If you're trading $1,000 account with a 30 pip stop loss average, 
0.1 trade is equal to 3% of a risk on a single trade, okay? It's okay. But if you put 0.5 lots, then you will be initially risking 15% of the account. Now, the first approach is better because you are trading professional. The second approach is maybe a gambling approach. And I don't justify it. The only thing I can justify is, okay, if you're sure about your trade and you have money to cover for a loss, then go for it. But sooner or later, you will trade with 0.1 on a $1,000 account because the risk will be too big, too huge for you to accept. A couple of times you can do it, but next time you will see the point. You will get in a proper risk margin. And a proper risk margin is 0.5% to 2% of a risk in a single trade. 3% is the debt the, the, the raises that you okay? If you go and risk in a single trade, more than 5%, you're crossing the danger zone. The primary rule of trading is you need to accept you need to accept the percentage of loss the same one as you want to win. So if you want to win 50% on your account, you need to be prepared for a 50% of a drawdown. If you want to make 100% on your account, you need to accept 100% of a drawdown, which is effectively a loss of account. So guys, remember, as soon as you cross 5% margin, you're in a danger territory. It's called danger zone, okay? Danger zone. Okay, that's the truth. Now, I will tell you a few things about being nervous, okay? Guys, forget about the perfect trade. What does it mean, the perfect trade? 10 pips stop loss, 100 pip target price. Very, very hard in these market conditions. The timing, the, the system, a uh, lot of psychological factors, market bias, everything should be taken into account and lady luck should smile on you. If lady luck smiles on you, then you will get a perfect trade. Forget about it. I have never, I have never done 10 pip stop loss with 100 pip, with 100 TP winner on a live account. On demo account, it's okay. From time to time, maybe you will have it. <laughs> but on live account, I wouldn't gamble really with it. Really. The perfect trade is your method. The perfect trade is the method which can consistently give you 0.523% per month. If you're making this consistently, in a year you will be making 35%. In 10 years, imagine guys. And you can do this with a low risk. Okay? Low risk trading is the key. I'm talking now from professional approach, not from gambling approach. I, I know what two, both those two styles of trading are. Because... I've been gambling from time to time, but it's only if I have the money to cover it. But on the professional approach, my risk is 0.5 to 2%. And if I make this consistently, I'm happy. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay. Because I know that you can make money on $10,000 account. Easy, it's easier to make it than a thousand dollar account because on ten thousand dollar account, if you go with 30 pip stop loss, okay, and uh, 0 0.3 guys lot size, that's basically 0 0.9 risk. 
in a single trade. You're still making some money with it. But if you put 0 0.3 on $1,000 account, that's basically a risk of 9%, right, on a 30 pip stop loss. So guys, you know, it's different. This can be considered a sort of gambling. This is not gambling, okay? So focus on the process. How you do it, when you should trade, when you should stay away from the trade, which days in a week are good for trading, which days in a week are good for playing football with your son or with your, um, I don't know, with your friends or going out, doing something different. Focus on tips, not on money, because it's very hard to focus on tips if you're constantly watching your account. The biggest account I have been trading was, okay, this figure. Thousand and, it's, it's thousand and fifty hundred pounds, okay, sorry, it's hundred thousand and fifty thousand pounds, okay, hundred and fifty K, G, B, P. That was the biggest account I have been trading so far in my career, 150K GBP, guys. And entries on this account were huge. For example, I, I have been trading in a team where one of my colleagues uh, was making constantly $500 on a single pip. So basically he was taking two pip winners to get $1,000 in few seconds. I, I personally was against that principle. I could have never traded like this, never ever in my life. Because he was focusing on, on, on money, not on pips. So one pip on that account was worth $500. Two or three pips and you're good for $1,500. Guys, 10 pips, you're good for 5,000. Okay, it's GBP. So 5,000 British pounds. Guys, it's, it's, it's good money, right? And because you, you make this money in, in, in maybe two minutes. But the process was not okay. Because he was focusing on money, not on pips. Soon the account of 150K okay, was turned into 120K because he was doing revenge trades. And eventually he brought the account back, but he needed to get a credit for it because it was huge and it was basically it was basically a loss. Huge loss, 30K loss. And that loss was made, believe me or not, in 15 minutes. Okay? 30K loss in 15 minutes. And what do you think? Did he trade nervous? Was he very nervous when, when he traded the account? Yes. Definitely. All the things which I've been talking about have been erased. He was not focused on the process. He was not focused on pips. He was not in, he, he didn't increase the risk slowly. And definitely he didn't step away when we told him to step away from the screen. Because I was watching the account melting away before my eyes. 150K account to 120K account in 15 minutes. Guys, he was a good trader and he still is a good trader. Do not, do not think that he is a bad trader, he is a new trader or he is good, but psychologically he was not 
good. He was not on the proper psychological scale. Okay? He was not on the proper psychological scale. Why? Because of this. Okay? Because of this. The emotional spiral, guys. You know what this is. Okay? This is support. This is support. This is resistance. This is what happens below the support. This is what happens after the support. Treat it as support resistance. Support, support. When you try to trade optimistic and hopeful, you're basically buying lows. And you still have your psychological, I can say, you, you have positive psychological factor to reach enjoyment that you will be happy with your trading, that you are passionate with it, and you, you should stop trading that. But if you jump in a trade with a huge passion and you are very sure about your trade, the chances are you will psychologically be pulled in a little bit to the downside. Because if you start to lose, you will be get here. If you start to lose again, doing revenge trades, you will be sucked into a spiral of doom. And this is the worst you can think of. Disappointment, doubt, worry, blame, discouragement, anger, revenge, hatred. Goodbye to your account, okay? He started here because he was focused on making money, not pips. He started to lose. He was brought here. Then he tried to cover for a trade. He was optimistic. The trade went few pips in profit, but it was not enough. And finally, when he lost 30K in 15 minutes, he was here. It took some time to get him back to this point, okay? The point is you should handle your emotions. You should handle your emotions, guys, always. Fear carries over to next trade. You are fear that you are lose, that you will lose because you lost your previous position. Fear always carries over to next trade, okay? Greed is the opposite. It means taking too many trades, okay? After a couple of consecutive win, winning, for example, win trades, your ego will so be so high and will so be, it will be so, so, so strong that you will feel invincible. That will let, lead you to trades that you will normally not enter. Finding good trades is hard enough. But finding bad trades is much easier after this, believe me, much easier. Emotions cause, per, I can say, perceptual distortion, where you only see the, the, the tree instead of seeing the wood, the whole wood. You are the problem, and you are the solution, okay? It's said that fear blinds us to opportunity and greed blinds us to danger, okay? Remember this, guys, what I'm saying. Remember this once and for always. Fear kills the opportunity and greed blinds us to danger. When you're fully present, you're living exactly where life is happening. When you are fully present in your trading, okay, that will allow you to experience every moment in market and life as precious and unique. It's the best way to defeat the enemy within yourself. Okay? Experienced traders sometimes pull the trigger too often, and that's also bad because less is better. Less is better as my friend, Dale Pinker, Forex Top Hunter, always say, said, less is better. Do not take too many trades during day trading. Because if you take, if you take too many trades, you will lose. If you, if you start winning, get a couple of things and stop trading for that day. Okay? Follow the strategy which an emotionally tells you when to enter and exit. Have a good strategy. 
I know, find a good strategy. Because good strategy will tell you about stop losses, mentors which can teach you about trading systems, live Skype calls, live no webinars, will tell you the rules of their systems. So it will be easier for you to take into trading the system or, or, or the, the method. The most important part for me, in my opinion, is lower the risk. If you're taking trades with 0.3 on $10,000 account, you will not be feared. Because a loss equals to 0.9 on an average 30 pip loss. Now, the point is, guys, when you trade, you should always limit your entry lot traded to risk. So if your risk is always, let's say, if your risk is always 1%, it doesn't matter if you trade with 15 pip stop loss or 100 pip stop loss. The only difference is instead of taking 0.5 lots, you can take 0.1. But the risk will be the same. Remember now, risk is always fixed. Risk is fixed. Remember this. It doesn't matter your stop loss. Risk is fixed. Be it 15 pip or 100 pip stop loss. The only which changes is initial volume traded, lot size. With 15 pip stop loss, you maybe can take 0 0.5. On 100 pip stop loss, you will trade with 0 0.05. So if the risk, lower the risk, you will be safe. You won't sweat during trading. Unless you are gambling and you have the enough money to cover for your losses. That's that different psychology. I'm talking from a professional trading psychology. Use visualization techniques to take focus away from possibility of losing. And now I, I need to make a webinar where I will talk about binaural beats and meditation. That's very important, guys. Proper visualization techniques. You need to think positively. Because if you think positively, you will attract positive things. If you think negatively, negative things will happen. That's the truth. We are living in, in, a, in a huge universe. Earth, our, sol, our solar system, is only a small part of the whole universe. All human beings are interconnected with cosmic energies. If you think negatively, your trade will go negative usually. You won't feel good. Try to think positively uh, about your trade. Why you should think negatively if you lower the risk and your system is good? Why the hell you should think negatively? Think positively. Use visualization techniques to take away your focus from possibility of losing. Think that you will win the trade. Visualize the current position becoming a big winner, a grand slam. Think about it, not about losing, okay? The question, ask yourself, what is the worst thing that can happen? Ask yourself. And what is the worst thing, guys? It's stop loss, right? The answer is stop loss. That's the worst thing. No one will kill you if you make a bad trade. No one will think of you as a bad trader if you make a bad trade. Because if you have stop loss, you're good. You know when to stop your loss. What is the best thing that can happen? Target price hit. Think about it. Think positively. Deep. Take a deep breath and breathe deeply. Relax yourself. If you still cannot accept the worst, you should definitely not take any position. Because you need to accept the worst. Okay? But if the worst happens, you will still be okay because your stop loss is hit. And it's only 1% of your account. Okay? And the final words from me, from this slide, yes. Open a small account and trade micro lots, guys. Okay? Open a demo account with $100 if you have the money. 
and try to trade it with 0.01. You will get your system, you will, you will see how the system works, and still it's not big, you, you know, $100 is not big money. You will still, you, you will still, you see, 0 0.01 on 100 what on hundred dollar account. It's not huge. If you if you lose, you will lose. You won't lose much. You will lose less. If you win, you will not win much. But you will know how you perform. If you can make hundred and twenty dollars from hundred dollar guys, that's twenty percent. That's great. Then you can invest. Thousand, ten thousand dollars, even more. If you can make a profit within the risk limit, you can do the more money. Okay. If you cannot trade consistently with fifty dollars, you won't be able to do it with K okay, one thousand dollars. Try breaking your position up into three smaller positions for the same trade, and see how it will go. Try to scale in and scale out, okay? And always remember my example, which I was telling you about, 150K GBP, okay? 100,000 pounds and 30,000 loss in 15 minutes. Think about it. Guys, if you have any further questions, I, I'm, I'm glad to answer. If you don't have any further questions, I hope this webinar is recorded and I think it will be uploaded. So uh, you can always listen to this and you can always try to instill this knowledge in your mind because if you accept all the things which I've been talking about, eventually, eventually your losses will become winners. And even when you lose, you will be relaxed, guys. The key is to be relaxed. Because if you are not relaxed, you would do as my friend did. Taking revenge trades, and that's a huge problem. Always. Even with some professional traders. Do not let it happen. We will have more webinars about the subject. And I will explain how to what process you can you can take before trading so stay tuned okay and thanks for your comments thanks for all of your comments insights and uh, yes i will be here with you again and thanks for forest week for allowing me to share my opinion with you of course guys uh, just one quick mention uh, before i forget try to take a look on Under Market Supreme Edition. I, I also trade with other markets. It's a great addition to MT4, and it will also make your life easier. It's called Under Market Supreme. It's a set of expert advisors on your account, so you can really trade it a, a lot easier with, with the tools. Thank you, and I will be here with you soon. Cheers. Trade safe.